Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match, or rather, to Nanalaze the Dawn. Once again, we have Flipstep and Stuart98 continuing this series of the New vs. Pro Challenge, so if you missed the first one, Flipstep is forced to use only Raiders, being the higher skill player, while Stuart is allowed to use anything. Also, before this starts, I should have pointed out the 1v1 tournament is indeed this Saturday at 10 a.m. UTC. So go and sign up for that. It's on the forum. There's a thread for it. It's also in the news and the main page and everything. So yeah, go and sign up for that. 1v1 tournament, Saturday the 26th at 10 a.m. UTC. So 3 a.m. Pacific time, 6 a.m. Eastern North American time, 10 to noon around Europe, and I think 6 or 7 p.m. in Australia. So yeah, sign up for that. Even if you don't think you're going to win, it's good experience. But anyway, back to the game. So Flipstip, excuse me. Once again, attempting the Scorcher Rush that was so successful last time, and Stuart going for a counter of sorts. Geyser Plains is a map where Light Vehicles is very common, so this is, unlike the last game, not that unusual. Like Tartarus, no one goes Light Vehicles on Tartarus. It's a flat map, but there's so many areas that spiders can just take advantage of the height difference that Light Vehicles aren't very common. They're not unheard of, but they're not that common. Now, Geyser Plains, on the other hand, that is a Light Vehicle heaven. That's Light Vehicle Paradise. You get Light Vehicles here all the time. And Shield Bots, too. Like, it's small enough that Shield Bots are viable, like the Shield Ball works and they're balled up nicely, but it's flat enough that Light Vehicles work really well. And you see both, quite commonly. And Flipstep is not going to be able to quite do that Scorcher Dive as they wanted to do last time. In fact, Stuart able to get a bit of a fact not quite a factory dive. Fortunately, a bit of a micro mistake there. Push that Scorcher to the wrong side of the factory. But hey, a bit of rating here and there. That's still good, but not... Is it going to be good enough? That's the question. And certainly not to continue the raid. Flipstep expanding to the north. Not expanding to the south. Not going for the main plus four. Going instead for a bunch of plus 1.6s. Although there is... Actually, you know what? This is one of those things I don't see people often do. People don't often expand to the north. I'm not entirely sure if it's because it's not as individually valuable as the south. With plus 2.3 and plus 4. But it's not terrible. It's also not expected. Stuart probably doesn't even expect Flipstep to go there. And I don't think Stuart... No, neither player, in fact... No, Flipstep does have radar. Stuart does not. Stuart has no idea that Flipstep is going to the north, and they wouldn't. And Stuart themselves are actually going for... Okay, seriously, F4 is a thing. Hit F4 whenever you start the game so you know what metal extractors are worth taking, because plus 0 0.7, plus 0 0.7 is a waste of time. Go for this plus 2.8. Four times the value for the cost of one metal extractor. Or even the 1.4 in the center. It's two for one. Like, seriously. This plus 0 0.7 is not quite worthless, but really only handy at the very, very, very end stages of the, of the mech splitting stage, like, of the raider phase. Before you consolidate. Like, as you consolidate and get your territory set up and you split it in half. Which, this map isn't one to really split in half too often. But if it ever does, that's when the point zero point, plus 0 0.7s come in handy. Otherwise, no. Just no. I mean, Flipstep is going to be very ahead in the economy as a result of just getting better. In Stuart K, it's a slightly stronger economy right now, but Flipstep spent a lot less on it. So Flipstep has more Scorchers, and now Stuart losing the north side as well. So yeah, they did go for the north, which is good. But pay attention to what the metal extractor value is, because it's not always plus two. It's oftentimes, I mean, especially in an old map like this, this map is ancient. And ancient maps like this just have metal maps. That's it. There wasn't a whole lot of care necessarily put into what metal extractors are valuable or which ones are more valuable than others. And this one isn't even symmetric for that matter. It's it's not a map where you can expect everything to just work out in some clean and very organized, detailed way. It's pretty slap. It's old. It's a bit sloppy. To an extent, that's kind of the charm of this particular map. But yeah, F4 view for a reason. Flipstep, however, does know which metal extractor to take, and they are taking them. In fact, getting to a very strong position right now, while Stuart is forced to rebuild. Okay, Detrino's arguing with me, but they're, the point is their metal maps are not symmetric, and they aren't, they aren't symmetric, and they certainly aren't all the same value. As a lot of mo most modern 0k maps, it's like plus 2. It's somewhere between plus 1.6 and plus 2.3, but it's uniform. I should say more, older maps did not care about uniformity. 
This one actually has some really odd things with these double metal extractors that Zero K interprets as a giant metal extractor. But the point is, don't expect uniformity. Do not expect it. It is not guaranteed. But back to the game itself. As a leveler got destroyed by, well, I think twice its cost? Yeah. That was about twice its cost in Scorchers. No real surprise there. I mean, it's always good to point out that despite the fact that there are type counters in this game, they are not hard counters. They're for cost counters. Like, if you had two levelers, those Scorchers would have been dead. One leveler? No, it's actually even one Like The thing is, levelers also, as a unit, not independent of the fact that it's a raider, as a unit, scales... It scales a lot with its numbers. Mostly due to its very low fire rate. Like, one leveler is actually not that powerful. Especially not when it's fighting one at a time. But yeah, its fire rate, it, even though its damage is high, its AoE is high, it does... I mean, it's pretty heavy hitting. It's a group versus group weapon, more than anything. Single versus group, it doesn't work. Like, Warrior versus Glaive is an example of... A, war a riot that's really effective as an assault and really effective even against individual enemies. Levelers are not like that. It's a subtle difference, but it's important. And at this point, Flipstep is just running away with the game's economy here. I mean, they are... I mean, 24 to 19 doesn't seem that big of a difference, but when you consider that pretty much this entire time, Stuart has not really managed to get much of an army going. And Flipstep, I mean, they have a lot they can convert with here. Even with just the Scorchers, they basically can raid anywhere on the map. And those levelers, yeah, if they attack the main base, it's a bit of a problem. A bit. But anywhere else, and these Scorchers will just go ham. Not a problem at all. And actually, the factory looks like it's... Well, not really... Okay, the factory's not the concern. The concern really is the periphery. And these areas over here, in the south as well, like, that's what really matters. The main base matters somewhat. But if Flipstep can set up the economy and contain, which it looks like they're about to do, I don't think it'll be a problem. So... So, at this point, Stewart is actually no, impressively getting a bit more territory to them. But yeah, they need more levelers. If they're going to do this, they need like two or three levelers in an area. Which is a little hard to hold. And possibly get a couple Scorchers of their own, because right now, Flipstep has hardly any defenses. Hardly any defenses. They have very little that they're actually working with that's actual defenses. And especially since no air is part of the challenge, they don't have to worry about getting attacked by anything other than Scorchers. Which, as we can see, require more than just one leveler to counter. But yeah, if they have Scorchers just running around the map, a couple Scorchers here and there just taking out metal extractors, it's not like a Napalm Bomber can come in and tear them to shreds, or Rapiers. That was one of the other rules. That's an additional rule for both players. Neither player can make air. Stewart does not seem to be taking much advantage of this, which is... possibly to their detriment. Although, at this point, they're just not really defending very much at all. And they've fallen behind so hard in economy that I don't know what they're going to be able to do to come back from this point. They're trying with the levelers, but that's forcing them to turtle up, and they aren't really overdriving t as much as I'm sure they'd like, nor are they defending themselves that much. Nor are they pushing out the level... Like, pairs of levelers could go out, two or three levelers at a time in groups could go out and assault the map right now. Like, this is actually enough levelers, they could probably just march straight down Flipstep's base and tear it to shreds. If they chose to do so. Like, eight levelers... I mean, they don't know how much Flipstep has, but Flipstep only has eight Scorchers. Like, keep a couple levelers at home, throw the other half a dozen into Flipstep's base, and Flipstep would be destroyed by it. Like, Stuart would be able to just tear them to shreds. That, the commander particularly, and that's right there, although the commander doesn't matter right now, 55 metal income. That is not gonna work. The commander doesn't matter at all. But getting to the main base, which... He's currently building a silo. That's... There's a problem. But... Stuart goes in. Stuart decides, well, forget it. I'm just gonna destroy Flipstep as best as I can with these nine levelers. And I think they actually have a bit of a chance. I mean, this expansion here wasn't too heavily damaged, all things considered. And Scorchers 
Like, this is what I mean by group versus group. These levelers are going to have a field day tearing apart these Scorchers. Well, they lost a few in the process, but still, that's... The main problem is going to be this here, and it's hitting this... No, hitting the main base. Napalm shot onto the main base. Inferno tearing it apart. But the levelers are having a... Oh, they're blocking each other off. That's the problem. They're... Well, they're blocking each other off. Did manage to get rid of the commander. What damage can they deal, though? That's the thing. They need to be able to... If they can get into the main base, that should be it. However, that was a very strong shot. The Inferno shot to the main base. If they can take... They need to take care of the, of the missile silo pretty much right now. Oh! Oh, that is really good to know. And really painful. But... Also saved Flipstip. I know it sounds weird because they just lost two caretakers. Possibly, no, they lost all three caretakers. And suffered a lot of damage into their main base. But the thing is, Stuart's base has been on fire this whole time. They've already been taking a lot of damage. Their production is also stalled. But they don't have a bunch of levelers inside of Flipstip's base anymore. I was actually kind of curious about that. I figured that, I've never seen that happen actually. No one's, I've never seen anyone shoot out a missile inside of a silo. I assumed that it would explode and burn everything. Stuart apparently did not. Which is rather unfortunate for them because at this point they have no real way of dealing the necessary damage to finish this off. And if they had, oh, if they hit the fusion reactor just a little bit harder, it would have blown up the rest of the base. Torn apart flips its economy and really helped. Not, not finished up by any stretch, but still would have helped. At this point, though, Ravager Leveler, which isn't a bad mix. I mean, at this point, once again, Flipstep with another eight Scorchers. So Stuart is not in that terrible of a position. But that, that silo is still up. That's the important thing. The silo is still alive. It can still build Infernos. It's still building Infernos. That's... It's not over yet. It's far from over. But yeah, the loss of those Levelers, that was actually, I think... A Really big blow to Stuart. Far larger than it was to have the Inferno go off inside of Flipstep's base for Flipstep. So it's kind of unfortunate. I mean, I can see why you'd go for the missile silo, but unfortunately they hit the missiles and not the silo itself. And thus it... So, yeah, pro tip! Don't hit the missiles unless you're prepared to run everything away the same way you would from a commander. If you're prepared to do that, then go ham. Just go for it. Tear them apart, I mean, that will destroy their base, too, or heavily damage it. But, otherwise, yeah, tread with caution. And it looks like this is probably going to be the, the killing blow. Flipstep tearing apart the north side. Missile coming into another Inferno, hitting Stuart's base. And Stuart with four levelers. Well, okay, another leveler, and now Ravager Assault. But Panthers count as raid... Oh, yeah, I did point out the heavy... I showed the heavy tank factory, didn't actually point it out too much. That they do, in fact, count as raiders, but levelers beat them pretty well, too. Not quite as effectively as they do Scorchers, but they still basically destroy them. Like, if you're fighting Light Vehicle versus Heavy Tank, I would recommend Leveler versus Panther. Not necessarily the not necessarily the best option, due to the health differences and the fact that thus the leveler can be stunned out. Levelers aren't very tough, but it's not a terrible idea. However, this is going to be death. Stuart will lose everything right now. This attack is going to finish it off. Like if their commander, especially if their commander goes down in that, that was a nice little shot. There. I mean, that Aegis there, that was nice. Good choice. Sort of. It was one of those choices where if it had stayed up, it would have been a really good choice. But it does mean that now these levelers are just on their own. Because that Aegis would have been another two levelers. Which might be the difference between winning and losing, though I think that it, at this point it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, that finishes it off. Aos destroy the factory and destroy the commander, and Stuart's probably going to throw in the devil. They'll probably see... Okay, they're, what they're going to do is they're going to see what happens with these levelers. Deal as much damage as they can. See if they can't maybe win. Because they have nothing. These levelers are it. Oh, and this Mason, but basically the levelers are it. Leveler. That leveler is it. When that leveler dies, they'll throw in the towel. There we go. Yep. So, yeah. Very important thing to bear in mind. Destroying missiles. 
causes them to detonate, or at least destroying infernos causes them to detonate. No word on the other three types of missiles, but I'm assuming that they all detonate. So yeah, get it out of there. Just get your units out of- if you're gonna do that, but ideally don't. Ideally target the fact the fusion reactor, target the factory, do other things. Like the silos would have been a good target, like target, target, hit- I think it actually doesn't have a default key. I set it to T in my own case, but I don't know if it actually has a default key. It might have been changed. I honestly don't know what the defaults are for that. It should be T. It really should be. So you just hit T and click on things if you need to- if you absolutely need to make sure that it hits. Because you can also box it. Doesn't look great, but you can box it. Yeah, choosing a target is super important. Oh, that was the last level there, but you threw in the towels to her just surrender. Not sure what Stuart's waiting for. Because they are dead. What the? Anyway, so yeah, that's game two. Flipstep winning that one again. They did play a third game. I think they're just playing three games. And it'll be on Zion, so stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment.